Hello, so this video is sponsored by Babbel, which is an app that allows you to learn a foreign language quickly and easily. You can use the website, you can use the app, and if you sign up for three months, you can get an extra three months for free. You can find out more about that at the end of the video, but they approached me and asked me to make a video about language, and because I'm me, I've made it about film. Obviously. So today I'm going to be talking about the pub scene from Inglorious Bastards. I want to look at how it uses language to build suspense and I've even got one of Babbel's language experts to help me. Say hello to Ted. My name is Ted Mentley. I'm from Wisconsin in the United States, but I live in Berlin and I work at Babbel. And you're a language expert? I, I am a language expert. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But all you really need to know is that Michael Fassbender is portraying an Englishman posing as a German soldier. He goes to a pub to meet an informant only to discover that the pub is full of Nazis. Hate when that happens. Tarantino is a master of film language and he uses it the way that you would with any language to communicate. He's using everything in the frame, everything you're seeing, everything you're hearing to convey emotion and information. This scene is from a technical perspective near perfect. The shots are efficient and economic. Sometimes instead of using separate shots, he'll convey multiple things in one shot. This stuff sounds simple, but directors don't really do it often enough. He makes sure that you understand the geography and that's important because if you don't have to figure out where people are and what's going on, you can immediately invest emotionally into the scene. And what emotion does he want you to feel? Tension! Hang on, who said that? I thought I was alone. See, now I feel tense. Obviously, the premise of this scene is inherently tense, but film language is used in a variety of ways to build and sustain that tension for a solid 20 minutes. I could go on all day about film language, but here's a few examples. This shot begins with Fassbender and his informant, Bridget von Hammersmark, having a secret conversation, but develops onto this German soldier when he interrupts them. But look at this framing. Her shoulder is taking up most of the frame. It looks like it was never intended to be a shot of this man, and it makes us feel like he's intruding on the conversation. Sound design, too, plays a huge part. The first half of the scene is quite jovial. There's laughter and chatter and music playing in the background, but that all stops when the antagonist is introduced. Look at the lighting when we're introduced to the antagonist. He's sitting alone in the corner, in the shadows. It just you know, makes me nervous. He's also shot in profile, so we can't see his whole face. He's mysterious. He makes us feel uneasy. Even the blocking of a scene can build suspense and inform character. When he stands and enters the scene, he circles the room, almost like an animal stalking its prey, while the camera mirrors his movement until it and he discover Fassbender, the object of his attention. This shot establishes the power dynamic between the two characters, and this shot reinforces it. Like I say, it seems like really simple stuff, especially when you break it down, but it's really effective. The scene develops when this Nazi soldier begins to interrogate my or Fassbender's character for his strange German accent, and that brings in the main source of the tension in the scene, language. Hu spoken human language. This film was targeted predominantly at an English-speaking audience, which means that most people that have watched it, like me, don't speak German. So even though that we know that Fassbender's character is giving himself away, we don't know exactly how he's doing it. We don't understand the nuances of the German accent, but somebody who speaks German would, they would know what he's doing wrong, which brings me back to Ted. I'm definitely not like a native level German speaker by any means, but um, yeah, you can definitely hear some artifacts of English pronunciation. When, when he's speaking. For example, one sound that's uh, often pretty hard for English speakers to make in German is the uh, soft CH sound. It kind of sounds like a, like if you imagine like a cat hissing, you know, like like in the word ich or nicht. But when Michael Fassbender says it, he, he does pretty well most of the time. Ich. But sometimes it comes out sounding a little bit like ich. Sie nichts an, nicht weiter belästigen, mich gesehen. That's one thing that could give him away, but in certain regional dialects, for example, here in Berlin, they say ich. They don't say ich, really. But he doesn't claim that he's from Berlin, so... A couple other things, um, his R sounds. Now, they don't sound like, a, like an English R, but they also don't sound so much like a German R. What it sounds like is an English person giving their best go at doing the German R. Aber Führer. In German, there's really only one L sound, and we call that uh, in English, a light L, and that's, for example, when you say the word light, you have that L that's at the front of your mouth. But in English, we also have what's called a dark L. It's formed more towards the back of the mouth, and in German, they don't have this dark L sound. So when Michael Fassbender says something, for example, like uh, Oberfeldwebel, Oberfeldwebel, you can hear the dark L. And how is it supposed to sound? Oberfeldwebel. And he says Oberfeldwebel. Oberfeldwebel. But ultimately, it's not his ability to speak German that gives himself away. It's a very small cultural difference, which I was happy to find out is a very real thing. This is a real thing because they, they start counting with their thumb, but every German person I've ever talked to is like, 
Why would you start coming with your index finger? And what's so brilliant about that moment is that it plays out like a twist. We know that something went wrong, but we don't find out exactly what went wrong until the next scene. That's the German scene. And that might be the thing that I find most interesting about all this, is how the scene changes if you do speak German. I thought about it in, in two different ways. I thought that in one sense it could make the scene more tense because you can maybe hear these small mistakes he's making. But on the other hand, it could take some of the tension out of the scene. It could kind of take that, that climax and make it less surprising. Yeah. That he does figure it out because if I can hear those mistakes, I'm not even a native German speaker and I can hear them, then this accent fiend can hear them as well. So I, I could see it going either way, but I tend to lean towards the fact that it would take a bit of the tension or surprise out of the scene. Although you would get a little bit of that like snarky, mm -hmm, I know German, so I figured it out before. <laughs> but what do you think? I'm especially interested to hear your thoughts if you do speak German. Is there anything we didn't pick up on? Please let me know in the comments below. And are there any other films you can think of where the experience really changes when you know multiple languages? Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. And now a message from our sponsor. Babbel can help you learn a new language for self-development, travel, family, or just for something to do. You know, we all need hobbies. The lessons provide relevant vocabulary so you can have proper conversations and speak a language the way that you've always wanted to. There's a team of language experts to help you and over a hundred linguists creating the courses. And lessons only take about 15 minutes, so instead of spending more time on social media, I could be learning a new language. You know, instead of having fights with middle-aged men on Twitter about DC movies. My personal favourite lessons are the ones where they test my pronunciation because they do not let you move on until you get it right and it makes you feel like you're really getting to know the language. Babbel is available on desktop, Android and iOS devices and like I said at the beginning of the video, if you buy a subscription for three months, you can get three months for free. If you follow the link in the description, you can sign up to Babbel now and start learning a new language straight away. Ted, thank you very much for being part of my video. Yeah, no problem, Jack. Do you want to say goodbye in German? Yeah, auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. How's my German? I bet it's rubbish, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, could use some. It some work. Could use some work. Oh yeah, that's what Babbel's for.